Okay, so we've got kind of a busy day today. Um, so I will start this thing recording. So, because to stay on schedule, um, we have to cover optimal binary search trees and longest increasing subsequence today. And I have to start the, start the clock going. Okay, so this shouldn't be too bad. Um, the thing is, this is on the assignment five, both of these things. Um, and they're very nice to see. So, um, but normally I wouldn't try to teach them in one lesson. You remember the optimal binary search trees was supposed to be last week, but somehow we spent the entire day on um, uh, subset sum and knapsack. There's a question and answer. Can you have DP uh, that have constant space complexity? I don't, I mean, you could probably come up with something, but that would mean your matrix would have, um, would be of constant size, which means you wouldn't really need the matrix. It, you, you can have stuff where it's linear. That makes sense. There's one dimensional uh, dynamic programming, and actually the longest increasing uh, subsequence is one dimensional, although um, if you do it naively, it's, um, it's quadratic. If you do it using a fancy data structure, it's analog n. If there is a way to do it, and I think that it's linear, but that is it's kind of brittle and it breaks easily. Um, but no constant, I don't, I mean, you, you could come up with something, but I don't think usually it, you would consider that. Um, Dynamic programming. Okay, uh, so optimal binary search trees. So you remember from um, the stuff about Huffman coding that uh, you can have that you have a probability distribution. Huffman coding, you get a bunch of of symbols, <clears throat> and you have a probability distribution over those symbols, and you try to arrange the you you build a tree with the leaves labeled by those symbols such that the expected depth is minimized. Okay, so um, you know what binary search trees are, and you've seen um, balanced binary search trees, and some of you may have seen uh, dynamic balanced binary search trees, and some of you haven't, although it should be taught in second year, and it's upsetting that it is not always. Um, I'm not going to have time to teach it today. I'm just going to have to assume that some of you learned it and the ones who didn't learn it either can get through without knowing it or can teach it to yourselves and if not you should go and yell at your second year instructors because they should have taught it. Okay, <clears throat> so um, but that the the dynamic binary search dynamic balance binary search trees is for the longest increasing subset. This you can imagine that if you have some keys is this the good market? If you have some keys, so, um, okay, I think in the example, that's one form of dynamic balance binary research tree. What's one form? Um, not sure I understand. AVL trees. Oh, right, okay, now I see. Um, all pan, okay, except the person who answered, that's one form of dynamic balance, the, only answered to panelists, so only I can see that. People who want to, to talk to everybody have to send to all panelists and attendees. Okay, yes, there's AVL trees, red black trees, uh, splay trees are not, uh, splay trees are sort of borderline because the worst case they can be very deep but amortized there. Um, you should also have no, learned amortized analysis in second year, and maybe some of you did, and maybe some of you didn't. Okay, <clears throat> I think in the notes, <clears throat> the example of the keys I use are things like apple, banana, banana, um, I don't know what else there was, there was maybe grape, kiwi, pear. Um, okay, well, well, to be going on with, for right at the moment, this is, this is going to be um, our 
our keys. Now, um, normally I would do a probability distribution of these things, but it doesn't really matter if it has to be if the, if the distribution is normalized. You can always normalize it and make it one. It's, it's, so I'm going to tell you, suppose you have these keys and, um, and out of some number of times, you expect that people are going to search for uh, apples five times and bananas three times and grapes, I like grapes, let's say it's four times, kiwis once and pears twice. Okay. So what does that add up to? Five, seven, ten, fifteen. So out of fifteen times, a third of the a third of the time people search for apples. A fifth of the time, banana is four fifteenths of the time, uh, grapes. Okay. These are in alphabetical order. Now, <clears throat> for something to be a binary search tree, um, the the keys have to be in order in the tree as you go from left to right. So um, this is not the same as Huffman. So this is a different problem. And the other thing is, um, now you have these things called leaf-oriented binary search trees where the keys all have to be at the leaves, but we're going to ignore that, and we're going to consider what you, can, what you think of as a normal binary search tree where the keys are also at the internal nodes. Okay. There is also a version of this where you can have probabilities assigned to gaps between the keys. So you can have a certain probability that that, some, that, that a search will fail, and, and that I will be looking for uh, what's another what's another fruit. Um, uh, uh, I have gone blank. In my defense, I got m mango. Okay, mango. So mango is somewhere between kiwi and pear. So if somebody searches for mango. It's, it's going to go down all the tree, and then you're going to know that, that the search, that the predecessor is, is kiwi and the successor is pear, but you didn't find it. So, so you can, um, in that case, you, you draw the binary search tree as circles for the internal nodes, and then you have these, these squares for the leaves, and the leaves are the failure. Okay? We're not going to get into that. I think I put that on the exercises last year. But, but okay. Um, so you can see these, yes, I can build a, a, a tree that has logarithmic height, but that means that on average, that, that I can't say anything other than my searches are going to be um, about logarithmic. Now actually, just for fun, let's yeah, okay. So um, this, this is going to work, okay, as an example. So what would you normally, if you just wanted to have, in, now in, in your previous classes, you saw that balanced is good. So if we can, we can make something balanced, it'll be grape at the root, right? And then, oh, maybe I want this to be, a seven. So let's let's just add some of these. Okay, let's add mango. Mango is um, one pair. We said was two. Uh, um, how do you spell com? No, com quite starts with a K. No. What's something that start a fruit that starts with something after P? Quince. Quince. Yeah, okay. Quince is one. Okay? So now kiwi is going to be at the root if we want it to be completely balanced. And then banana. Apple and grape. And here it'll go pear, mango, and quince. Okay, 
So what is, how much time do you expect a query to take? Well, it's going to be um, with probability, how much does this sum to now? Um, 8, 12, 13, 14, 16, 17, 17. Bleh. Um, okay, but we're, we're not going to normalize by dividing by 17, because I don't, can't do that in my head rapidly. Instead, we're going to say, what is the, um, if you have these searches, how much time do you expect to take? Well, when you're in a, in a binary search tree, you sort of spend constant time at each node as you're going down. Okay, so um, let's say, so you're going to have, uh, for five of the searches, five of the 17 searches, you're going to have, in the, in the scrub notes from last year, I actually did the depth, the root got zero, um, but I'm going to do it with one now. So I'm going to say, so this is depth zero, but you get time one. Okay, so you get... 5 times 3 plus 3 times 2 plus it, 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 4 times 3. So this is the number of times I search for apple multiplied by its depth plus 1. The number of times I search for banana multiplied by its depth plus 1. The number of times I search for grape multiplied by its depth plus 1 plus 1 times 1 plus um, 1 times 3 plus um, 1 times 3. Wait, pear is... Oh, I forgot pear. Uh, mango plus 2 times 2 plus 1 times 3. Okay. So we believe that the, the number of comparisons, um, equality checks, uh, yes it is, that's what I'm saying, number of edges from root to node, yes, that's what I'm saying, depth plus one. Because even at, 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 uh, if you're looking for kiwi, you still have to, to check the root and see that it is kiwi. Okay? So in the scribe notes, I just did depth. Uh, the scribe notes from last year. I haven't written the lecture notes for this year. So we believe that the number of, the number of you know, you have the, the target x and you, you do a comparison. You say, okay, is it less than, is it equal to, is it greater than? And if it's equal, great. If it's less than, you go left. If it's greater than, you go right. Okay, so this is the number of comparisons we're going to do, which is 15, 21, 33, 34, 37, 41, uh, 44. Right. Is that minimal? It's balanced. It's perfectly balanced. So in second year, this is what we were looking for. But I don't think this is actually the best we can do. Right? Because um, this looks okay. Actually, this looks okay. So these two subtrees are about the best we can do. But is it really true that uh, kiwi should be the root? What if we did... What if we did grape as the root? And then apple here. Banana, and then over here, um, we're going to do pear, and pear, mango, kiwi, This is, I forgot to hit record. Okay, but the little camera is recording. So we're going to have another one where we don't have the, the full video. And quince.
I'm going to blame everything on getting vaccinated yesterday. Yeah. Because. Um, and also I went running. Um, okay, so now we have uh, what? Apple is 2 times 5 times 2 plus uh, 3 times 3 plus 4 times 1 plus mango is 1 times 3 plus kiwi is um, 1 times 4 plus pear is 2 times 2 plus quince is 1 times 3 10, 19, 23, 26, 30, 34, 37. So this is actually a better tree. Apple? What, what's Apple? This one is Apple. So here, Apple is at depth 2, so we spend time 3. Here, Apple is at depth 1, so we spend time 2. All comment. Okay, never mind. Okay, okay, good, good. Um, so this is actually a better tree. It's less balanced, and the worst case is worse because here we have a node at depth three, and here we don't. So the worst case here is worse. But if we know the probabilities with which, with which we search for the keys or uh, frequencies, then um, then we can actually build a tree that's better, that has better expected time, or better over a long series of queries, it's better, okay? Um, so how are we gonna do that? Um, and we're gonna do that with dynamic programming, of course. So, but I want you to, s it's not that hard, and, but I want you to see it because it's not, there is a trick. Um, okay, so again, what we're going to do is consider building, um, so let's, let's say we have n keys, we're going to fill in a matrix that's n by n, okay, so this is how many, oh, I'm not going to actually fill this in, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, okay. This time I don't think... I have to add the extra row and column. Okay, that's not great, but okay. So one, two. N, 1, 2, up to N. So, um, what we're going to say is, now, these things um, have a cost, okay? So, we're going to say that the, uh, the, okay, this has a cost which is 44, and this has a cost which is 37. Now, the, the first observation is, that the um, the contribution of a well, okay. What we want to prove is that a subtree of an optimal binary search tree. Optimal means it has minimum cost. An optimal binary search tree, a subtree, also has to be an optimal binary search tree. Okay. So, if this is optimal, then this part is also optimal. I'm not saying that this is necessarily optimal. We haven't worked it out yet. Why is this true? Because if you if you think, okay, so you have this tree here, you have this tree here, um, you're saying if this is optimal, this has to be optimal, because if you could rearrange this so that the, um, the, the time you spent, for all of the queries where you come down here, if you could rearrange this so that this was a better subtree, then doing that would reduce the cost of the whole tree. So, um, 
so optimal binary search trees are sort of hierarchical in this sense. The subtrees of optimal binary search trees are also optimal binary search trees, which is why the dynamic programming works. Because you're going to, uh, we're going to say that um, AIJ is the cost of an optimal BST on keys I to J. Okay? So the answer, the minimum cost, is going to be stored at NN, right? And then you can do this trick again of for each cell, you figure out how you got the minimum cost. So we're, we're minimizing over a bunch of stuff, and you store which of those was the minimum, and then you can actually um, get trace your, your path back and figure out what the actual tree is. The same way we did it with what was well, how did um, uh, you could do that with an so I can subset some. But what was the what was the dynamic programming? problem I taught you first, where, where you would, anyway. Um, okay, so the difference is here, we're not going to say for i from 1 to n, for j from 1 to n. That doesn't quite work. Or maybe there's a way to make it work, but that's not how people usually do it, or at least teach it. Um, <clears throat> what we're going to do is think about the size. Okay, we're going to say if I'm trying to figure out the the, the best um, the an optimal tree on uh, on ten keys, then I'm going to assume that I have all of the that I have the the minimum cost for all of the trees on up to nine keys. Zero one yes. Yeah, Zero, one knapsack, but I only taught that. Um, what was the first thing I taught for, for dynamic programming? Edit distance. Yes, you could get the alignment by going back through the matrix for the. the um, okay. So, um, so this. Yeah, we're going to have to erase this. We need more board space. Maybe I could have copied that over there. But somebody probably had that. OK. So this will be in more detail in the lecture notes. and. It will code and everything, because I wrote the code last year, but what you're going to do is say, okay, for um, all of the, for all of the subtrees of size 1, it's pretty easy to work out their cost, right? And if I just tell you, you're going to, you're going to build an optimal binary search tree, and it just stores the key grape. There's not a lot of choice about what this tree is going to be. It's going to be a vertex, and it's going to store the key grape. It's not going to be anything else. So it's easy to fill in. Um, so this would be, uh, what is the time for the searches in a binary search tree of, of just storing Apple? Um, and OK, so if we say it's, it's going to be uh, looking at the looking at the root, which is the only vertex, is going to for each of the five searches of Apple, it's going to take like five, three, whatever, four, whatever, whatever, whatever. Okay, so um, it's easy to fill in. Um, oh no, sorry, this is actually on the diagonal. Right. Yeah. This would be, you fill in the, the diagonal, sorry, this would be from two, well, it's also easy to fill in um, the cost of everything from two to one, which is, is, doesn't make sense, because that's empty, okay? 
easy to fill in a i i because it's just the, the, the cost, right? So, so this is cost of an opt BST of size one. So that, that we can do. Okay, so now we're going to say Uh-huh. <laughs> 